you asked for it, nay, you demanded it, and now it's here. Nice video, you created this. Love this video, man. Drop some more editing to make the second. We all definitely need a part Tutorial on how you made that maze animation. Great video. The response to part one was absolutely mind-blowing. Your energy, your feedback, and your excitement were just off the charts. I can't thank you enough for the love and support. Y'all made it clear you wanted more, so here we are. Welcome to part two. This time around, we're taking it up a notch with advanced next level editing tips that will transform your videos and make them truly stand out. Speaking of next level, shouts out to NextLev for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Before diving into part two though, let's quickly rewind and recap some of the key points from part one. But hold up, hold, 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 hold up, stop right there. If you haven't seen part one yet, I highly recommend checking it out first. You'll find the link in the description. So, I've shared three essential steps. Understanding the idea, storyboarding, and, well, editing. I walked you through how I approach edits from conceptualizing the editing in mind concept and demonstrating my edits with hands-on tutorials. Yeah, tutorials like these. If any of that slipped by or you need a quick refresher, don't worry. You can always check out part one as well. It's packed with valuable insights you do not want to miss. And it's the perfect foundation for what we're diving into next. Anyway, right now, I'm going to make tutorials for these. And wait for it, there's one more surprise at the end, so stay tuned. Now, check this out. I named it the Maze Editing. Now let's dive into the process of creating the stunning maze editing effect step by step. First, import your maze design and select the ellipse tool to draw an ellipse on the screen. Resize it as needed and then begin animating the ball. It's alive! You'll notice in the video how the ball aggressively breaks through the maze wall, dramatically changing its color to red. Now let's recreate that moment. Start by identifying the perfect frame for the color transition. Yeah, this frame feels just right. Duplicate the ball layer, trim the layers at this frame, and change the second ball's layer color to red. Then add a smooth fade-in effect to the red ball while fading out the original ball's layer for a seamless transition. Next, to craft the breaking effect, pre-compose the maze layer and search for the shatter effect. Set the view to rendered and adjust the shape pattern to glass. Create a new white solid layer and hide it, then use the pen tool to outline the area for the breaking effect. Navigate to the gradient layer, select the white solid layer, and apply effects and masks. Then return to the shape settings to customize the repetitions and extrusion depth. Under physics, set gravity to zero and tweak the rotation speed to 0.4, adjusting the roundness and viscosity as per your preference. Move to Force 1, click the stopwatch to create a keyframe and set its initial value to 0. Then advance a few frames and modify the value to create the desired impact. Finally, add the deep glow effect to enhance the overall aesthetic. And there you have it. The maze editing effect brought to life in spectacular fashion. Hope you love the process, y'all. Now, which one to select? Um, I choose this one. Watch this. Let's dive into some 3D editing magic and create this stunning 3D Earth animation. Here's how you can make it step by step. First, as usual, open Adobe After Effects and do these settings. By the way, I made the Earth design in Canva. If you know your way around, you can easily make it by yourself too, or you can just simply download Earth textures from Google. Now, import the Earth design you made in Canva as a PNG file, drag it into the composition, and name the layer Earth Skin. With the Earth skin layer selected, go to the Effects and Presets panel, search for CC Sphere, and apply it to give the design a spherical appearance. Then toggle that 3D switch for the Earth skin layer to enable 3D functionality. Now add rotation to the Earth skin layer by selecting it, pressing R to access rotation properties, and adding keyframes for smooth spinning animation. Adjust the light direction under CC Sphere's light property and add keyframes to animate the light's direction over time. Next, add text to the composition using the text tool to type your desired text, customizing the font and size as needed. To create a circular animation for the text, draw a circular mask on the next layer with the ellipse tool, then link the text path to the mask so the text aligns with the Earth's border. Duplicate the text layer and adjust its position to place it opposite the first text layer. 
Apply Gaussian blur transitions at the start and the end of each text layer. Add a slight y-axis rotation to both text layers for added motion. When the voiceover mentions the deserted island, zoom in on the desert area by adjusting the position and scale keyframes of the earth skin layer while increasing its rotation speed to emphasize the location. As the voiceover shifts to the destination, rotate the earth further to focus on a greener region, maintaining a subtle rotation for a seamless transition. And that's how you bring this visually captivating 3D earth animation to life. Now it's all up to you. Copy this process or maybe just do it with Mars and satellites. All right, I'm glad you've got a good understanding of the process so far. Now I want to do a tutorial of the dollar bill fire animation. But before we dive into that, let's go over some key basics. These are techniques I consistently use in my videos. Things like shake transitions and character transformations. Trust me, mastering these will elevate your edits and make your animations pop. Let's dive into this character transformation and see how to create this amazing effect step by step. First, import your characters. We use pre-made characters for our videos, and for this effect, you'll need at least two. Don't worry, we'll also provide the presets we use for this transformation as well. Drag both characters into the timeline and stack them, placing one above the other like this. Start by applying the realistic motion blur effect to both characters. Then add the wobble screen shake and calm shake effect just as you did for the first one. Now it's time to adjust the positions of the keyframes. Position the first keyframe here, count three frames, then two frames, and then three frames again, adding a keyframe at each point. Repeat this process for the second character as well. Don't forget to apply ease in to both layers, including their opacity transitions. Next, adjust the opacity of both characters. For the first layer, go to the first frame, count three frames, and add a keyframe for the opacity. Then count two more frames and add another keyframe. You gotta keep these frame intervals consistent throughout. Lower the opacity of the second frame to zero, then copy these opacity keyframes and paste them onto the second layer, adjusting them as needed. And there you have it. A smooth, seamless character transition effect. With these steps and the provided presets, you're all set to bring your characters to life with incredible transformations. Now take this character transformation technique and make it truly yours. And now let's quickly jump into the shake transition. Looks awesome, right? Let's break it down step by step so you can recreate it yourself. First, check out this cool shake transition. Not to brag, but I made it myself. Whatever, no biggie. To start, create an adjustment layer and place it between the two layers where you want the transition to happen. If you're aiming for a slow transition effect, simply expand the duration of the adjustment layer. Once done, drag and drop the shake transition onto the adjustment layer. On the other hand, if you prefer a fast transition effect, contract the adjustment layer to shorten its duration and then drag and drop the same shake transition onto it. And that's it! With just a few steps, you created the sleek and dynamic shake transition effect. Remember, timing is everything. Use your creativity to match your transitions perfectly with the beats or key moments in your edit. And on to the second last tutorial of this video, but trust me, the last one is something even more valuable, so have a little patience and stick around. But before that, I have one quick message from today's sponsor, NextLev. There's no need to worry about finding a new niche and even competitors in the same niche. NextLev is an AI tool specifically for YouTube that will help you level up your content creation. It has an AI niche finder that can help you find new winning niches and even find and learn from competitors within the same niche. If it's something you'd be interested in, check the link in the description. Now back to the video. Alright, first let's dive into this amazing dollar bill fire animation. Damn it looks cool. Now let me guide you step by step. First open Adobe After Effects since this animation is created there and do these settings. Import the dollar bill PNG into the composition. Next, deselect the logo layer and choose the rectangle tool. The color doesn't matter, so set the stroke to none and click OK. Double click the rectangle tool to create a rectangle that matches the composition size. Now select the logo layer and press P on your keyboard to bring up the position property. Move the logo to the right edge of the screen, then go to the first frame and add a keyframe. Move to the last keyframe and click reset to animate it. Jump to the midpoint of the animation where we'll set up the track mat. If you don't see the track mat column, click toggle switches and modes to make it visible. 
Set the logo layer's track mat to the shape layer and then invert it by checking the box. In the effects and presets panel, search for turbulent displace and add it to the shape layer. You can use the following settings or adjust them as needed. 10 for complexity, 25 for amount and 300 for the size. Select both layers, right click and pre-compose them. Name the new composition logo vanish and click OK. Duplicate the logo vanish layer, then set the second layer's track mat to the first one and invert the mat again. Move the first layer 2-3 frames back to create a distorted line effect. To remove the unwanted outline, search for Minimax in the Effects panel and add it to the second layer. In the Effect Controls panel, set the Operation to Minimum, the Channel to Alpha and the Radius to 1. If the outline persists, just increase the radius. Select both layers again and pre-compose them, renaming the composition Logo Line. Then return to the Project panel, drag the Logo Vanish layer below the Logo Line and search for Glow in the Effects panel. Apply Glow to the Logo Line layer. Leave the first glow as it is, then duplicate it, and for the second glow, set the radius to 50. Duplicate it again and set the radius to 100. Basically, keep duplicating until you're satisfied with the glow effect. If you want to experiment with different colors, search for Fill in the Effects panel, add it to the Logo Line layer, and pick any color you like. If the glow feels too thick, go to the Logo Line composition and shift the shape layer a few frames to the left. And there you have it, a stunning dollar bill vanish effect. Now how about that? Excellent. Learn it and apply your creativity and start vanishing maybe some different things? I don't know. And there you have it, a stunning dollar bill vanish effect. Learn it, apply your creativity, and you can make anything vanish. Ah, I know this video is getting too long, but I really want to give you some quality tutorials, so I'll wrap it up after this one final and extraordinary tutorial, I promise. So remember this from the beginning? Wondering how I made it? Well, don't worry, I'll show you step by step right now. Let's get started. First, grab the ellipse tool and draw a circle on the screen. Then switch to the rounded rectangle tool, draw a rounded rectangle and adjust its anchor point. To animate the rectangle along the circle or path, expand the circle layer and navigate to contents and ellipse 1. Right click on ellipse path 1 and choose convert to bezier path. Open path 1, copy the path by pressing Ctrl C, go to the rectangle layer and paste it onto its position property using Ctrl V. And now your rectangle will animate along the circle or path but you'll notice it might not rotate correctly. To fix this, select the rectangle layer, go to layer, then transform, then auto orient, and select orient along path, then hit OK. This will ensure the rectangle rotates properly along the path. To create multiple rectangles with the same animation, simply duplicate the rectangle layer and pre-compose it. Adjust the rotation value for each rectangle to achieve the desired pattern. For smoother animations, I use the flow plugin. Just select the keyframes, choose a suitable pre-made graph, and click Apply. Once smooth animation is applied to one rectangle, you can copy and paste the keyframes to the others. Next, I added text for editing tutorials. After finalizing the animations, I adjusted the colors and added the deep glow effect. Finally, I drew a circle or path using the ellipse tool and added some color. To create a line drawing animation, expand the circle or path layer and navigate to Contents, then Shape 1, then Stroke 1. Set the butt cap to round cap, then go to the taper settings and set the start length and end lengths to 2.0%. Adjust the other taper values to around 25%, now scroll back up, click add and select trim paths. Expand trim paths, create a keyframe for the end property at zero, move forward a few frames and set it to 100%. Once the animation is complete, adjust the rectangles to align with the line animation. Lastly, I applied Animation Composer's Gaussian Blur to create a cool blur effect. And that's how you can create this stunning animation. Now it's time to wrap up this video. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. I hope you've learned a lot and gained some solid knowledge to level up your editing game. Remember, the more you practice, the better you'll get. And I for one can't wait to see your creativity shine. Oh, and before you go, check this out. YouTube Automation. I'm sure you've seen YouTube channels like this. Before you decide to start YouTube Automation Guy Academy, what I have done here today is truly... By now, you've probably seen countless YouTube gurus selling this idea of YouTube Automation and how they made thousands of dollars using this business model and all that. 
let me tell you why it really sucks to start a YouTube automation business before one of you would actually jump into this rat race. YouTube automation. It's less YouTube Out. automation. For YouTube automation. Automate. Automate. It's less YouTube automation. It's less YouTube automation. I'm thinking of making a separate tutorial for this kind of edits. They're really perfect for epic intros. But here's the deal. Thanks for all your support, but I'll need more to keep this going. So I'll drop that tutorial if this one hits 1500 likes. So hit that like button and let's make this happen together. Until then, keep creating and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!